What a penalty. We've been made to believe that success is the be all and end all in football. If you're not successful, then you're nothing. What people don't talk about is what success actually brings with it. Sure, it's lovely winning stuff, but winning stuff regularly breeds expectation. It destroys passion. Take this reaction from German fans beating Italy in a dramatic penalty shootout. <laughs> It's not their fans' fault. They're, they're, they're not bad fans. In fact, Germans are among the best fans in the world. Everybody knows that. Their national team has been very good for a very long time. And so uninspiring celebrations are just part of success, unfortunately. Uh, and in conclusion, I'm glad England are shit. Why? Because, well, this. <laughs> Long live losing when you're shit at football because you're so relieved that something has gone right for once. It's an amazing thing. On the pitch though, Schweinsteiger demonstrated balls of magnificent proportions. Bigger than my mate Big Ball Jim from the Crown and Scepter who had to have reduction because of the strain on his pelvis. If you didn't know, Schweinsteiger won the toss and decided to shoot at the Italian end. Nah, not going German end. Too easy. I'm going to take it down the Italian end and I'm going to ram it down their throats. He went there, he won, balls the size of King Kong. After the result, intelligent people in America claim that the penalty shootouts are actually an unfair way to resolve a match. 60% of all shootouts are won by the team that shoots first. 60% is obviously an unfair advantage, especially given the fact that this is supposed to be an equal way of deciding a, a game of football. So apparently all you have to do to make it 50-50 is allow the team who misses the first, hang on, is allow the team who misses first, sorry, what is it? So all you have to do is allow the team that misses shoot first in the next round of penalties. No, hang on, this isn't right. So if, if Germany go first and score, and Italy go second and miss, the next penalty will be taken by Italy to give them back the advantage, I think. Hold up. Anyway, apparently that makes it 50. What do you think? Do you think we should change the way penalties are? It sounds a bit like sour grapes as well, to be honest. And on to Buffon. From the moment Buffon kept a clean sheet at 17 for Parma against AC Milan in 95, everyone knew a star had arrived. Since then, he's collected titles, cups, he's broken records, and he's helped Italy win the World Cup in 2006. When scandal struck Juventus in the same year, unlike some other players, Zlatan, I'm looking at you, Buffon stayed loyal. He helped the club climb back out of Serie B and back to the top of the table. This summer, when the worst Italian team in 50 years touched down in France, there was very little hope. But led by their captain, the Azzurri knocked out the champions Spain and took World Cup winners Germany to the brink. He saves this tournament of defied age and gravity. He should have declined, but if anything, he's improved. Is he the best keeper in the world currently? Is he the best keeper ever? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Rude Ballon for another week. We'll see you on Friday. Subscribe and don't leave.